what does it take to be successful in accomplishing your dreams? Some would say work ethic. Some might argue it's luck. Some could say it's privilege. But if we look at basketball, we see that there are many people who love the game and countless players work tirelessly every day towards the dream of playing professionally. The sad reality is most of them will not make it. Only 2.9% of all male high school players in the country will go on to play college basketball in the NCAA. How many of these get drafted by an NBA team? Less than 1.3%. That means the average high school basketball player has a 3 in 10,000 chance of playing in the NBA. There is, however, a glimmer of hope. Over the years, it has become increasingly common for players to play pro ball in other countries. Still, the odds are overwhelmingly grim. Only the most passionate, the most obsessive, and the most driven will make it. Players get overlooked every day for not passing the eye test. A perfect example of someone who almost slipped through the cracks is Sterling Thomas. This is his Transcend story. Nineteen-year-old Sterling Thomas, a native of Fairfield, California, understands that he was never a McDonald's All-American, he did not go to a big-time school, and he started playing basketball later than most. But even knowing all of this, Sterling is ready to embrace the struggle that comes with his dreams. For basketball, I want to I wanna have a career in China. I want to have a long career in China. And then in life, I haven't done that for you now. He doesn't care if his dream sounds improbable to some. He doesn't need it to be plausible, just possible. Luckily, Sterling does have a huge advantage, and that is the support of his family. I think basketball has helped give Sterling something to focus on um, and kind of motivate, you know, like identify a goal for him and motivate him to kind of work towards achieving that goal. It's definitely helped like keep him out of trouble because, you know, if he's in the gym and, you know, he's working with his teammates and the coaches and trying to improve his skills, he's not out there on the street. So that was, I think, more probably helpful for me than him. research and trying to find people to kind of help him improve his skills. He was spending more time in the gym, more time working out, more conscious about like the different things that he was eating and um, trying to figure out like what he wants to do with his future and how he's going to achieve those goals and include basketball. In. He always wanted it, but he didn't, he didn't really want to work on it to really, to really get it there with, uh, with, with the trainers uh, and me. Yeah, it's his work that can it's, 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 it's got great, it's, it's great. Now he, we get up like early every morning to, to work out. He does two or three days, two or three times a day working out. Uh, and he feels forever playing. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta give him a lot of credit on, on the workout. He's, he's, not, he's not a lazy guy. Sometimes he does have to be pushed. But uh, he's, not, he's not a lazy guy. He, he, will, he will go out and do it. He will, he will, he will work. I know with him wanting to play basketball that that is you know a lot of people will say you know that's a hard goal to achieve and you have a lot of people that might be in your ear to kind of discourage him from trying to do that and um, when I say value himself for him to kind of be focused on what his goals are and to not be distracted by the naysayers or you know 
the quote-unquote haters out there but you know as long as he's putting that effort forward to work to you know and, and put in the action and, and the action steps to kind of follow through so that he can achieve it the, you that's how you get as close as possible to achieving your goals so always trying to kind of reinforce that with him like hey you know you are going after something that may be difficult to achieve but that does not mean that it's impossible um, I didn't start playing organized basketball until sophomore year in high school. After that, I just fell in love with it. All right, it was just one time in high school when I was a junior, and my science teacher, he told me that it's really rare that anybody goes anywhere for basketball, and I don't know why, but I believed him. He just told me, he told me about this job opportunity to be carpenter making $20 an hour. I don't know why, but that just stuck with me all throughout my junior high school because I, was, I would kind of lift up for him and he I just kind of believed him for some reason. But that's it. Really. Did you buy into what he said for that time when he for told like you? A, for like a month I did. I, I stopped worrying about basketball. What sort of an effect did that have on you? Like, was, did you feel, like, like what did you feel like? It was oh, negative. Shit. I wouldn't say I was depressed, but I wouldn't say I know I wasn't happy, but it wasn't like, a, it wasn't as deep as being depressed, but it wasn't. Right, it you wasn't were motivated. Feeling, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I met Mark when he brought Vaughn to a Solano practice, and I I thought Mark was a player at first, just looking to play. So then I went up and talked to him. He told me he was a trainer, and he gave me his car. And I brought, I brought, it was me and my boy Marshall, he went up there and trained for the first time. And I, I like to train him because he's it it actually putting, making me work. He sees the potential inside of me when I don't see it in myself. So now it helps me coming from a player, I mean coming from a coach that's been through what, what I'm trying to get to. So that just reminds me that I um, to keep my eyes on the prize. My first impression of Sterling when I first saw him was, I could tell he was solid, he was strong, you know, physical guy, you can just tell. You know what I'm saying? I assumed he, played, he used to play football, which he did. guard at the end of the day. Now his game has changed dramatically just because not only is he stronger, but now he's very strategic, you know what I'm saying, and picks his spots how he wants to score now. His shooting right now to me is is his biggest strength. His range is deeper. His shooting has always been consistent, 
but now he's more aggressive. You know, like the first time I met him, like I can tell, you know, like he had confidence, but you know, he was still passive at times. Like now, now he's, yeah, like he's, he's a killer now. I feel like the only per person or thing that can hold me back is me. And that's just it. I feel like I'm the only person standing in my way. Experts have estimated that it takes approximately 10,000 hours of practice to master any craft. That's why players who have supportive parents willing and able to pay for their child to play in premier leagues, at elite schools, and with the best trainers money can buy, are more likely to get farther in their basketball careers. But sometimes, even 10,000 hours isn't enough. Players need exposure, or they may never be discovered, regardless of how hard they work. Unfortunately for Sterling, playing for a small junior college in California will not catch the eyes of too many recruiters, even if he did put up great numbers. Sterling needed the right person, with the right experience, to show him the way. So Sully, who's my former teammate, you know, back in college, we played together when we were in Iowa at William Penn University. Shout out to Sully. He's big in the recruiting. Like, you know, he's an assistant coach for one of the top prep schools in the nation, Scotland campus. He's been doing this longer than me, from the training, the coaching, the recruiting, everything, the networking. Like, he knows a lot of people. Me and him have been talking for years. You know, even after college, after I went professionally, now that I've been starting to train, I can go to him whenever I feel like one or two or a couple of my players aren't being noticed the way they should be. First impression of Sterling, um, I definitely thought he was a well-mannered kid. Um, of course, I thought for, for his size, he had a pretty decent body for his size, good strong body for a guard. Um, you can tell he's been in junior college. But after seeing him play, I felt like he was the type of kid that was definitely under the radar and could easily get, you know, a scholarship from some university. I couldn't really tell him if it was going to be Division One or Division Two or Division Three or NAIA or whatever the case may be. But I always felt, you know, from the moment that I saw him play in person, I felt like, okay, this is a kid that can definitely, definitely get some type of scholarship for basketball. You know, the Battlegrounds event, it was great. A lot of college coaches in the building, a lot of good film. Uh, but most importantly, uh, my guy Calvin Rayford was able to spot him. So it's always players that kind of get left in the drive. For me, I'm the type of guy that's gonna go get those players, bring them up and say, hey, college coach, you might wanna take a look at this kid. You might wanna take a look at this kid. And that's, and that's pretty much what it's all about. Um, my role in this, I don't do anything special. Uh, for me, it's more personal. I just want these kids to have the opportunities to not only get better at, at basketball, but it's so many different life lessons that we try to instill in these kids for them to be successful well beyond just the court. Um, but for Sterling, he was definitely one of the kids that took advantage of the opportunity. He was one of those kids that definitely stood out in the event to me. Um, he was one of the better available players at the time. And still, it was amazing to me that he did not have a scholarship offer at the time. And we're talking in April at this point. I tried to take his situation a little bit under my wing. I felt more connected with him since my college teammate was the one that actually sent me Sterling. So I definitely tried to, you know, do a good job at taking care of him and really marketing him the right way to where I felt like he can receive a scholarship. Immediately after the showcase, Sterling started getting interest from D1 and D2 universities. Two months later, Sterling received and accepted an offer for a full-ride scholarship to play at Quincy University in Illinois. Undeterred by the statistics, in the face of demoralization and despite the odds, Sterling persevered. This young man with only four years of experience playing basketball transcended the limitations imposed on him by society and on himself. What will he do next with this once in a lifetime opportunity? Time will tell. Stay tuned. Go, 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 keep playing.